channel, it's your girl Selmar. Today I am going to be doing a talking video. As you guys know, I'm a follow along workout channel and we usually don't talk at all. <laughs> so this is kind of a different style video, but I am very happy to share my results. If you guys clicked on this video, it's clearly because of the thumbnail. I've had a lot of growth, especially in my glutes and my lower body in the last seven months than I have had in literally like my four years of training. I kind of just wanted to share what I've been doing differently. Yeah, just some like tips and tricks on how to grow your glutes. If you are interested, please keep on watching. <laughs> so this is me in January 2022. As you guys can see, I'm a little bit skinnier. I'm definitely still very fit and I have muscle on me, but it's more of that like lean muscle mass. My body fat percentage was definitely very low. It's probably around like 22%. And right now my body fat is probably like 24. I have also gained 15 to 20 pounds. Right now I am 5'6 and I am, I don't know my exact weight, but it fluctuates from 142 to 146 pounds. In this video, I was 130 pounds. It may appear that my waist has stayed the same while I have significantly grown more muscle mass and obviously gained some fat in my lower body I have actually gained one inch on my waist my boobs have definitely gotten a little bit bigger but that's just because my body's storing more fat like I have more fat on my arms and definitely on my legs too it's not like I just gained pure muscle that would definitely take a lot longer and I would probably have to do like bulking and cutting stages so let's talk about the things that I kind of implemented this year to help me grow my glutes and keep my waist relatively small. Let's talk about nutrition first. I do an 80-20 rule, which is 80% nutritious foods. This can be healthy, clean foods. I don't like to call foods like healthy or clean. Nutritious foods. Your protein, your fats, your carbs, and like real whole foods. Oatmeal, eggs, ground turkey, chicken, fish, salmon, um, same thing. Bananas, broccoli, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, hummus, peanut butter, things like that. Like real nutritious whole foods. The 20% is like your more processed foods, like not that healthy and clean. For example, that's like ice cream, cookies, brownies, going out to dinner, like sushi. And for me, a big one is like sugar and alcohol intake. Like I love me some lychee martinis, some mojitos, like that's what I'm splurge on. That's like my 20%, going out for like a charcuterie board and truffle fries, lobster mac and cheese, like that's what I indulge in, okay? So that's my 80-20 rule. I do like intuitive eating, so I do not track any calories. I don't track my, my macros, any of that. My first year of training, weightlifting and stuff like that, I did track my macros, so I have like a gist of what certain things are. First tip is drinking a gallon of water a day. Make sure you are staying hydrated. Like I said, high protein intake, but you make sure you're also getting your carbs and fats. We want balanced a balanced diet, okay? Make sure you're getting your vegetables and your fiber in. Eating a lot of vegetables helps you stay full because it's very like high volume. So like, like don't put aside like, oh my God, I don't want to eat a chicken salad that's too healthy. Put everything in that salad. My go-to salad is obviously like lettuce, spinach. I'll do chicken. I'll do quinoa, black beans. I'll put avocado in it. I'll put some croutons in it. Like a homemade dressing, like something lemony. It's so good. There's literally so many recipes on Google that are like macro healthy. Also want to state that for nutrition, I was taking creatine from January to March. I stopped in March because I ran out and I just haven't repurchased it and I was just gaining a little bit too much uh, too fast and I didn't like it. I didn't like the water weight that I was holding on to. So I only took creatine from January to March and it definitely did help. It helped a lot because I was doing a lot of upper body. My chest significantly gained like a lot of muscle. Like I could definitely see it. Now let's get into the training aspect. This is some things that I changed this year which have helped me gain a lot more muscle in my lower body. I have stopped doing as much HIIT cardio. So I switched from doing a lot of HIIT cardio workouts into more strength training, dumbbell, weightlifting workouts. Basically, my training schedule is three to four weightlifting sessions a week. I do one to two lower body days, glute focused, and I do one to two upper body days, mostly chest 
shoulder focus but I need to start doing back and tricep focus and then for my cardio I do one to two sessions a week and it'll be either the 12 3 30 so like incline walking steady state like list cardio you're able to help your body burn calories and burn fat but you're not like losing that muscle that you're trying to build so I'm just gonna show you guys what a glute focus lower body workout looks for me Sometimes I'll switch out some exercises, so I'll just give you like kind of like a gist of what I do and I'll put up like some examples. I start off with barbell RDLs. I make sure that I do the RDLs with the glute focus form. And this is basically the same form as an RDL, but you just have a more of a knee bend and you're really hinging your hips. You want to keep a neutral spine, head forward. You don't want to like RDL and keep your head up like that. Never do that, you are gonna hurt your back. So make sure your neck is following with your spine. And I'll do four sets of 10 reps. And then I will move into sumo deadlifts with the barbell. I do five sets and each set has different reps because you're going up in weight. So we're gonna do 12 reps for the first set and we're gonna move on to 10 reps for the second set, eight reps for the third set, six reps for the fourth set, and for the last set is four reps. So for sumo deadlifts and RDLs, I 100% will use wrist straps. I think that's what they're called, wrist straps, because I have no grip strength. I don't even want to make excuses for myself, but I broke my wrist two years ago and it hurts a lot if I do not use wrist straps. So after that, I like to do single leg reverse lunges. If you follow my YouTube workouts, y'all know I love my lunges. Like, I do them on the Smith machine because it just helps with like balance and support. Like if you're doing it on a barbell or with dumbbells, you obviously don't have as much support as the stable Smith machine does. So I definitely recommend doing them on the Smith machine. I do three sets of 10 to 12 reps. If you can only get 10 reps and you can't go anymore, then stick to the 10 reps. But if you really want to push it and get that 12 reps, I recommend getting the 12 reps. And it's three sets. So each side, you're going to do three sets of 10 to 12 reps. I like to make sure that I like when I lunge in, I really feel that deep stretch right on my glutes and my hamstrings on the working foot. When I come up, sometimes I'll do like a little knee tuck, but you don't really have to. Just make sure when you're coming up, your foot is elevated so you're keeping that pressure on that working leg. Next exercise that we're going to do is elevated Smith machine single leg reverse lunges. So basically the same thing, but you're going to add either a 45 pound plate or a two 45 pound plates. It all depends on how deep you want to go into your lunge. So we are going to do three sets of eight to 10 reps. And I like to do knee tucks on this. You don't have to do the knee tucks. Some people say it doesn't work, but it doesn't really matter. Every set, make sure you guys are adding weight. We are going to move into cable glute medius kickbacks. We're gonna do four sets, but it's gonna be different. The first two sets, you're gonna do 10 reps. The last two sets, you're gonna do eight reps. So it's gonna be 10, 10, 8, 8. And you're gonna go up and wait every time, and it's on each foot. I think that's pretty much it. I kind of just wanted to mention, don't feel too pressured if you're not seeing results right away. Results take time, you guys. You have to be patient. Make sure you're taking videos and pictures of yourself because you may not notice the results like in the mirror, but pictures and videos do not lie. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know what other types of videos you guys want to see. I have my own place now and I'm so blessed and grateful. So I am going to be filming a lot more content. If you guys want to see some like daily vlogs, business vlogs, uh, what I eat in a day, morning routines, let me know. I will film it for y'all. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a blessed day. Are you feeling me?